I was jealous of people that had a passion. I didn't have a passion. And um, yeah, that, that's the other thing. Now there's like this pressure to not just do a career, but you have to be passionate about that career. And it's like, oh my God, mm. <laughs> whole other yeah. layer added into that. So those, those expectations and ideas of success, um, whenever we're championing one over another, it's bad. Like, Hello and welcome to Graduate Theory. Today's guest is the founder and director of Purposeful. She's previously been a director at various startups and now is a co-founder of her no-code business, Next Revolution. Her mission is to help young people find their place in the world. Please welcome to the show, Elizabeth Knight. Hello. Elizabeth, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to chat. Yeah, no, me too. It's uh, you're certainly very inspiring, and it's really cool to see what you're doing in the lives of young people uh, in Perth and right across Australia. Um, I want to ask though about uh, I was listening and researching you before the podcast, and I found uh, that you have this particular interest in vision boards. Uh, I'd love if you could kind of explain to us kind of the history in your life of vision boards, perhaps when you started uh, using these, and and what benefits uh, that you've had as a result of of creating these things yeah absolutely I think uh, nowadays you see a lot of vision boards in January on Instagram and you know they're sort of these like beautiful like collage type things and um, and that's the only time when people talk about their goals like with other people and Mm. especially on social media but that was something that I've been doing for quite a while now Um, so I I actually quite consciously make a vision board most every year and I sit down usually at the start of the year and literally spend like two or three weeks um, really resetting and connecting with myself again and thinking about the goals that I have Um, usually to begin with I don't it's not particularly structured it's just like a process of trying to get creative again and tap back into the things that I really enjoy and that can be anything big or small so I'll map out like full mind maps of, you know, all these different bucket list items of things I want to achieve. Um, And then I spend time sort of refining those goals and figuring out which ones most align with my values and are sort of most authentic or true to me right now in that moment. Um, Because there's lots of things you might want to achieve, but they might not really be the most compelling or like resonant goal for you in, in the you know, here and now. Um, And then I go sort of like scrapbook style and I actually create a physical vision board that has my top five to sort of eight goals um, anchored around the values that are most important to me. And and that sits above my bed usually. So it's the first thing that I see um, every day when I wake up. And I love the idea of vision for people who haven't actually um, been familiar with that process at all the idea is really to trick your brain into thinking that you've already achieved these things um, so you could do it again and it's a way of that I guess that idea of you know seeing is believing and and kind of trying to train yourself to think that these things that seem really lofty and ambitious are possible and within reach and hard to forget because most of us write down our goals at the start of the year and then Mm -hmm. like maybe don't look at them again until next year when we start that process again so yeah that's like a really creative process for me as well and um a really grounding sort of way of coming back to myself and I I sort of find that every like six to seven months I have like a mini life crisis where I'm like (laughs) what's my vision what am I doing and and that actually really helps Mm. me to refocus and Mm. yeah so that's vision yeah cool that's so good yeah I think that's really cool I've I've done some in the past, um, but I've just done like a sort of a word document where I just like find, even if it's like certain people that I want to be like and just like yeah. put a photo of them there or like, um, you know, things like that. But yeah, I think it'd be so helpful. That, like you said, if you're seeing it every day, it even just like reminds you that, oh yeah, these are the things that I'm like pursuing, uh, you know, because like often it's like, you know, start of the year, you like write down like, oh, I'm going to like run like three times a week yeah. like, the rest of the year or whatever. And then it's like, you might do it and then you, you go off and then you just kind of forget like that you even like decided to do that. And I Absolutely. think that's a big part of it too. Absolutely. And what I always am amazed by is that I'll start with like a list of, you know, 
probably like 50 to 100 goals and they're all different sizes of, of goals and um, I'll only pick like five or to eight that I'm working on right consciously but then mm. when you look back every year I've always actually achieved so many more of those goals than what I what I had you know in my vision and what I was focusing on um, because so many of them are sort of like next steps or, or follow-ons from each other and um, that process of just consciously carving out time to set goals and dream, I think that that's something we don't really mm -hmm. talk about much with goal setting, but dreaming is so important. Um, like actually really letting yourself go, okay, like what would I do here if I couldn't fail or if um, time and money were no object, right? Or if whatever the barrier is for you, if it's like confidence or skills or connections or um, courage or whatever, like what would you do if that was no longer a barrier and giving yourself permission mm -hmm. to think about things that aren't, you know, necessarily realistic or that other people would approve of. That's such an important part of that process, not just having like goals that seem cool and look cool to achieve. Um, you need yeah. to do that first part as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. And I'm interested to hear like what sort of artifacts and things you actually put in here. Like is, do you have a certain way that you go about doing it? Uh, creating a vision itself like yeah, yeah. Or, or like if, if you're gonna let, let's say yeah like we can use the example like yeah let's say i want to run like three times a week like what would you put on the vision board yeah sure. are there any like particular <laughs> things that you use like to sort of yes. articulate the goals yeah, yeah absolutely so it's uh you have to almost get really silly with it right? If, if you kind of cringe at, at what you create, that's a good thing because it means it's it's struck a nerve with you. It means it's like actually yeah. resonant. I always say it should feel like you're showing someone your diary when you show them your vision um, because it should be that personal to you. Um, so the, the types of things you can put, like once upon a time, one of my big goals was to meet Taylor Swift and I did achieve that goal, which was huge for my uh, nine yeah. stuff. <laughs> And I, for ages, you know, had like this like really cheesy photoshopped kind of thing of like me with Taylor Swift and I wanted to move to Sydney at the time. So like the background was like the Sydney Harbour Bridge and, and so it, <laughs> it doesn't have to be realistic. And I think that's what people miss often. It's supposed to be about really getting yourself in the zone of what would it feel like, look like, um, be like to actually achieve that goal. So who would be around you, you know, where, how would you be getting to, if you're, you know, going to the concert to meet Taylor Swift, like, how are you getting there? Like, did you have this dream car that you're driving or who's in the passenger seat next to you, you know, that's coming on that journey with you and, and doing all these exercises to really flesh out what that moment could be like, uh, which seems really silly, but makes it all the more real to you, which is mm -hmm. a really critical part. So yeah, lots of cheesy kind of Photoshopped, um, uh, things go on my vision board and that's okay because it's, it's supposed to be fun yeah. as well yeah, yeah yeah no that's really cool and a uh, nice segue here but what is on your vision board for this year did you end up doing one yeah I my this year I have to admit is mine's a little bit broken up but that's okay I um I, I'm sort of like unsubscribed to doing it every year necessarily it's, it's yeah, when yeah. you need it um my big vision for a long time now has to build, been to build a business that's purposeful, um, sustainable and, and scalable. So purposeful in that it's actually creating an impact first and foremost. Um, and secondly, uh, sustainable in that it's sustainable financially, but also sustainable for me personally and my team and scalable in that I want to create something that has a legacy and lives beyond my time here. Um, on this planet because we just have no idea how long that that is so where I'm concentrating most of my time is is that purposeful which is a startup helping young people to find their place in the world and careers they're passionate about and as part of that I really my goal has been to make my first full-time hire this year and to um, do a fundraise that enables us to actually build um, a scalable platform to support young people in in finding the right pathway with them uh, for their their, mm. their future. Mm. Um, so that's a huge vision item, and it's sort of why my vision has like encroached on multiple years at the moment because obviously yeah. <laughs> a lot to try and achieve in twelve months. <laughs> um, mm. But yeah, that's that's one of the big ticket items this year. Cool, that is exciting. 
Certainly. And I'd love to kind of dive into purposeful in a bit more detail. So you're going into sort of schools and, and helping young people understand what it takes uh, or, you know, what, what skills they need to live a more purposeful life. I'd love to hear kind of, kind of what are the challenges that you see, like heaps of uh, like common challenges that young people today are really grappling with? Absolutely. I think whatever you were facing when you were in high school, it's that, but times 10 <laughs> already. Mm. Um, the challenges that I faced when I was figuring out what I wanted to do have just become more and more amplified for this next kind of generation coming through. The number one question we get asked is always some variation of how do you find the right, you know, how do I make the right choice? Like how do I pick the right career pathway? And I'm always really interested by that wording because it assumes that there's like this wrong pathway that, you know, there's like this one dream job out there sitting there waiting for you somewhere. Um, and it's your job to like work harder and study harder and try and get closer to actually finding that, um, mm. which I think is a big myth because we, th this idea of the future of work and that a lot of jobs don't exist yet um, is not something that means, you know, there's these jobs that we just don't understand and, and aren't sort of tangible and we're not able to actually like conceptualize what they could look like. It, it means to mm. me a lot more about actually being the curator of your own path and your own opportunities actually identifying problems and creating employment opportunities potentially um, around solving those problems that could be through a business but also could be in your organization and so I think that notion is what young people really struggle with um, because in school we're taught to conform and the way that we actually need to be thinking about our careers is the opposite <laughs> we need to have so much more mm. agency in in designing our own path and um and being much more proactive about that but students that sort of just expect you to like tell them <laughs> like this is mm. the right career for you and it's here mm. and you can do these one two three steps and you'll get there but it just doesn't look like that and I think that's both the biggest failing of our education system but also it's, yeah. a, it's a really like hard realization for a 15 year old to that you get to call the shots, um, which is exciting, but also really overwhelming, as we know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, I think that's cool. I think it's even sometimes hard for like someone that's at that age to be like, "All right, like you're in charge <laughs> of your of your life. Like it's you, you know, take responsibility for everything." Um, it's quite a like yeah. big sort of weight uh, to carry. Um, and it can be hard to think about, you know, like, especially when you probably at that stage don't even know, like, really what any of the options are, let yeah. alone, like, the best option. <laughs> Absolutely. And especially when you're in school at the same time, you know, the, there's this tension I find in the work that we do in that we now have the privilege of being, like, the first interaction a lot of young people have in terms of thinking about their careers and their future, um, not just careers, but like the path that they want to take when they leave, which is really exciting. But also we are the first ones to introduce that idea to them that careers exist and this is a choice mm -hmm. you're going to have to make. So like we, you know, are trying to set them up with the best first step that they can, knowing that most mm -hmm. young people don't have a great first experience in careers. Like, um, yeah. but that's a lot of pressure too to make sure that that experience is, fun but recognizing that careers are tough it's not it's not easy it is kind of painful and there's going to be struggle there like there's not a perfect way to do it absolutely yeah yeah yeah. No, definitely that's cool well I, I guess like to touch on you mentioned there like education system and all that sort of stuff is there anything that like it's it, it I, I feel like it's yeah the education system I guess gets a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of hate or whatever at the moment but I guess if, if you had to like make some tweaks or perhaps even I don't know if you've really thought about this in much detail yeah. about like what if we could just create a whole new like education system that like did stuff completely different to school like do you have any thoughts there and perhaps like what well, schools could do better or about what like your ideal education system would look like definitely I think the number one change that I am passionate about is redefining what success looks like um, in our system because we have this system now that 
um, certainly in my experience, success looks like, you know, a certain ATAR or, um, and, and it prioritizes one version of success over another, which is so unhealthy and has like so many ripple effects um, later on in life as well, when actually we need to shift towards this more individualized idea of success and, and what fulfillment looks like to each individual young person. And they have to be able to go through that self-discovery process to work out what that looks like for them. Um, and the second shift is is around that same notion, but it's about expectations. Um, I go into schools and often talk with teachers and educators about the challenges we see young people facing and, and what they can do about them. And there's often this sort of comeback that says, oh, you know, but like, don't we have a responsibility to make sure students like doing something that's realistic for them, you know, like they're actually possible, like they're capable of. And, and I agree with that to some extent, but I think, you know, why is it such a bad thing to fail? Like, why is it such a bad mm. thing for someone to try that and then go, oh, that's actually not right for me, rather than like having to make all these decisions based on outside influences and factors. Like when you're 15, 16, mm. 17, like, the, it is about failing it's about making mistakes that's like what your whole young period of your life is about yeah. um, and we try and bubble wrap kids from that and so I think that's a big problem because it means that they don't know their own limitations and it also doesn't account for passion and purpose in in sort of building skills and, and talents like if you're motivated about something as any founder knows you have to learn all of these skills that may, well, most likely you were not good at back in year 10 or year 11, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, I, I have a, a cousin who's about 16 years old. And when she was in year eight, I think it was year eight, she got like a letter home from the school basically saying, um, oh, like she's on a vet pathway, like already, <laughs> like in year yeah, eight, yeah. based on her year eight grades. And oh, wow. that happened, that sounds terrible, but like that happens in so many schools that we see and narrowing and, and sort of like pigeonholing kids into these paths and definitions of what they can and can't do. I just think so arbitrary and it, it limits people's potentials in, in so many ways when mm. we think like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. And even like I remember when I was in school, I almost felt like, like I definitely wasn't someone that was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to do like this particular thing. But almost, uh, you, uh, you must, at least I think I felt almost jealous of like people that were like sitting there like, oh, they know what they're going to do. Like, <laughs> oh, like, I don't know yet. Like that sucks. <laughs> you know what exactly I mean? exactly the same. <laughs> I was jealous of people that had a passion. I didn't have a passion and um yeah that that's the other thing now there's like this pressure to not just do a career but you have to be passionate about that career and it's like oh my god mm. <laughs> whole other yeah, layer yeah. added into that so there's those expectations and ideas of success um whenever we're championing one over another it's bad like even if we're saying mm. now more young people should be entrepreneurs like that's still bad in my opinion because it again is like prioritizing one idea of success over another and not recognizing that not everybody's going to be an entrepreneur like it's just not yeah, yeah. it's not the way that's it's not going to happen ever so we shouldn't do that I don't think yeah yeah absolutely no you're right because yeah it's like we're all sort of playing our role in the team you know it's like a sports team yeah. you know not everyone can be the full forward that kicks all the goals <laughs> in the footy game you know there's other people that play different just as important positions um yeah <laughs> spot on um, one question i have is around like um around young people as well is there anything that you think that you kind of wish that the folks would just like it, they would just get this one thing it would it would really benefit them or perhaps it's things that they sort of underestimate the value of doing um when they're in high school yeah definitely i I think a key, honestly, the biggest differentiator when I look at my journey and the things that I started doing early on, and it wasn't necessarily by choice, but it has paid off in, in so many ways, was spending time with myself. <laughs> that sounds like quite an unlikely answer, perhaps, but 
actually taking time to really get to know who you are and building that self-awareness and understanding of um, not things that are super binary, like strengths and weaknesses, but just who you are, like what, what drives you, what motivates you, what energizes you, what drains you, what, um, what are the goals that you have? Like what things would you just really love to do and what, what things fire you up and frustrate you and building that self-awareness over time is something like building a muscle at the gym, right? Like we would love to go to the gym and have a six pack of abs after 10 minutes, Mm -hmm. like amazing but just it's impossible sadly and the Mm -hmm. same thing applies to understanding what you want who you are like your direction it you can't do it based on just like 10 minutes thinking about it and I think a lot of people put that pressure on themselves to go oh like I can't you know I can't do it in this already and now I'm going to give up like there's no point and if they looked back they've probably spent you know a total of like an hour actually consciously trying to work out yeah who they are and what they want um, so it takes time, and but it's so, so important because nowadays when you talk to any employers and, and they don't all recognize this, but absolutely the biggest differentiator between candidates, like if you're going for a job or just people who you meet and who you find interesting and compelling versus ones that you don't connect with is always this ability to be authentically yourself and to be confident in being authentically yourself. And if you're if you're clever and and if you can sort of take that to the next level, actually create opportunities through being your authentic self. Um, For me, I did that through creating my own business. That's like an extension of who I am in so many ways. And that's now become a career pathway for me. Um, But there's so many ways you can do that too, like starting a podcast or writing or something creative, or it absolutely doesn't even have to be creative, but that um, notion of, of understanding your authentic self and practicing it, is so powerful and it's a form of like what I would call career capital, um, which is the assets that you sort of build up early in your career. We usually think about like building experience and, you know, good things on your resume. Mm. But there's this other element of career capital, which is your personal sort of capital, right? Like who you are and, and can you actually tell a story that connects all those experiences in a meaningful way? If you can't, then what they're not worth, they're not actually worth as much as what we think. So yeah, authenticity, mm-hmm. understanding who you are and, and devoting, you know, conscious time to working that out and not beating yourself up about it either because you're not going to work it out in 10 minutes as much as you'd yeah. like to. Yeah, and I'd love to just, like, continue that thread because recently I've been reading in uh, all this stuff about, like, digital minimalism and, like, getting off your phone and, like, all that kind of stuff because I think that is, like, that is something really huge that prevents a lot of people from doing things like that is like when does a young person ever actually sit down and just like you know it's like you might go for a walk there's a podcast yeah. in like you go into the shops like there's music playing in the car like whatever it is there's just no like or at least like perhaps like 20 years ago there's yeah like there's now there's almost no time that's like there's there's nothing like, yes you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> um, and it just prevents a whole lot of those questions where it's like what do you what do you like well you know I haven't spent much time thinking about it because like yeah like you know I'm going from here to here and looking at this and this thing and whatever um and, and yeah I think it does yeah. and ironically um the time when I first started spending a lot of time with myself was when I was like super burnt out after year 12 and like my high school boyfriend had dumped me and like all of these things were happening at once. And I remember I, I also sort of by chance did this like internship over summer and it was kind of boring, but I was literally the only young person there and it was at the university. So I would sit and have lunch with myself like every day. And, and mm. even just that act was, would have been really foreign to me, but over a period of sort of like three or four months, like all of these things happened that made me spend more time with myself. And, um, when we are like, we have this podcast and we've interviewed like lots of, you know, young people as well about that journey of finding purpose and almost all of them, um, found it after this, some sort of event that forced them to have, take space basically. Um, and that, you know, might've been COVID more recently, which people can kind of Go, oh yeah, that that happened for me somewhat. Like I was forced to be at home and potentially alone, like for these extended yeah. periods of time. Um, if you can recognize that and create that space for yourself consciously, and you're 100 percent right, you have to because you can be consuming content in different ways 
all the time and never stopping. And now that muscle and kind of awareness is in me. So I get really anxious and often overwhelmed when I don't do that. Mm. Like, and yeah. that's what being purposeful is to me is I need to like act on those feelings of like, you need to just stop right now. You need to like get yeah. back <laughs> in with, with what's going on mm. before you can just rush on to the next thing. Um, yeah. Really, really challenging. Cause it's, it goes against the entire way that we live right now. But if you can yeah. do it, it, will just pay off for you so 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 much yeah yeah I agree I think there is a serious value in yeah whether it's like eating lunch without any any technology <laughs> like nearby like the tv is not on like there's no phones anywhere or like going for a walk like just going for a walk and like that's it there's no podcast or audiobook playing or like yeah you know just taking like simple time out like that I think is yeah very helpful to just deal with all like the things that might be going on um yeah. you know in your day to day and have some time to just like think and like reflect and stuff yeah i think for myself it's been like seriously beneficial <laughs> yeah cool well let's talk about your sort of journey as a founder because you're a founder like purposeful is, is is your thing and now you're off doing your second business which is this no code uh adventure um like what was the sort of story like for starting purposeful was there sort of a, a tipping point there where you you went from like this is a cool idea to like okay we're actually doing this now yes definitely i i like the idea of a tipping point because there's like you said like there's lots of things that lead to starting a business but what was the thing that actually made you do it like that made you kind of go and and um i i i experienced this problem myself when I graduated and I had like this shiny high ATAR and I had the scholarship to university and I had all of these traditional ideas of success ticked and done and I was so unhappy like I was so burnt out and so exhausted after high school finished like burnout took a physical toll on me and it doesn't you know it expresses itself differently for everybody but like I said earlier it forced that sort of period of like pause and reflection and I realized that mm. so many young people feel incredibly lost but don't know how to talk about it and don't have there's not really any support once you leave school to actually like find a path that is right for you and fills you and drives you so that was the problem that I wanted to solve and I had this opportunity come up where someone asked me to run like a workshop on um, something totally different like that I had been uh, involved in it was something more about leadership and I said hey like do you mind if I try this um, sort of purpose idea like I just I want to do this session mm -hmm. on how to find your purpose and I, it was a 90 minute workshop and there were like 50 year 10 uh, and 11 students on this camp it was like first thing Sunday morning it was absolutely the graveyard shift and I did it. I did this crash course and it was super raw and super like unpolished in so many ways mm -hmm. But it was, the impact was huge. Like I probably have never run a workshop or a session that was like as powerful as that first workshop, in all honesty. Um, I have, I still have the feedback forms that we printed out and every single kid like filled out this double-sided feedback form and were like raving about, you know, the experience. And it, that was the moment when I realized that there's a real need for this and I, I can actually solve it. Like I, I, I know what young people need and, and I can go on that journey to actually help them. Um, and still to this day, I have students that were in that session and once afterwards come up to me, you know, now uh, and in the past at uni and mm -hmm. say like, hey, I remember you from that workshop, which is amazing because yeah, well. it was the first really yeah, yeah. step even though I didn't know it at the time yeah wow that's cool <laughs> that's really cool I think it's yeah having that impact is so special and it's great to see that you've been able to like have the courage and and all the things like that to actually go through it and and you know do more of um, that great work with young people as well super cool um I have a question too so you're like purposeful you started when you were fairly young, right? So I think you were 19, if that's right, when you started that, which is fairly young for like someone starting their own company and kind of doing all this super cool stuff. Um, like what has that journey been like for you as, you know, as someone that's really taking on a lot of responsibility? Has there like, 
has it been really rewarding? I guess like really challenging, like I guess the general thoughts on what the journey has been like, probably quite crazy, but like, <laughs> yeah, interested to hear like how you sort of evaluate the journey so far. It's a really interesting question right now because I'm forced to confront the idea that it has been like four years, um, which is huge, like since that first sort of session and opportunity. And in some ways I still like seem like, you know, in my head I'm like my 19-year-old self that was on that journey, but I have to realise like all the ways that I'm so different and that things have changed so much and all that has been achieved since then. Um, so that's like a really good amount of time and it's also such a huge amount of your life as a young person and really formative amount of time between mm-hmm. 19 and 23. So I've grown so much personally through that process. I think the hardest thing uh, I dealt with to begin with was my, my self-worth, ironically, because people would look at you and go like, how did you have the confidence to start that? Mm-hmm. And I was confident, but when you're founding a company especially when you're young you don't know anything like that's the only given is that every day you're going to learn at least one thing because you know nothing (laughs) about about that process so it can be really disempowering at times because you're just every time you solve a problem you're just getting onto a bigger problem that you still know nothing about so Mm. that building that resilience and grit I love that word grit is has been the biggest takeaway I think um, from this journey that um, no matter you know where I go next or or how things eventually turn out like that will always stick with me Um, and I think additionally uh when I began, I was really caught up about the idea of being a young person in this space and being a young female in this space. And absolutely that um, influenced like how I thought about things and what I thought I could do and what I couldn't do. Um, I think if I could change like anything from that process, it would just be to be bolder um, sooner in the the journey and, and not wait for so much permission for things from people to go like you're ready to ask for this now or you're ready to you know, yeah, set yeah. this goal now and that's a bit more mainstream like that mindset we sort of accept now we don't really define people so much by their age but absolutely it played a big part in my mindset at the beginning of going am I allowed to do this you know like yeah. can I do this will people you know think that I'm silly if I do this and mm. you have to tackle that imposter syndrome I guess that exists in in the when you're in a, a job and a, a journey that puts you at the the bottom of the food chain every yeah, every yeah. day yeah 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 an interesting follow-up is yeah would you do all that again if you could if you could restart I honestly yes and that is key to living like a purposeful life is not actually having any regrets because if you're truly being like authentic and doing your best to live by your values and make decisions that align with those values um, then you shouldn't really regret anything because you've you've given that you're all and like that you've committed to that process um like an example would be you know th- there's so many things that I've obviously like passed up to take this path like one getting a normal job <laughs> like getting paid to, <laughs> and now I laugh like when I'm when I'm most stressed I, I know I'm most stressed when I'm like craving a real job a real job yeah <laughs> like, I wish I could just go somewhere to work where you just get paid for <laughs> working eight hours and then you go home um which is like funny because obviously that that is most people's reality um Mm. but I don't regret that I still don't regret that like you have to accept that with every choice you make there are like thousands of things Mm. you're saying no to in that moment as well that is that is life and uh, yeah I don't I don't regret that journey but I think there are definitely times like I said where I could have been more courageous or just like acted with even more conviction especially when it came to like my values um one thing that you could probably guess some of them but purpose is is really important to me um authenticity is really important to me and as as well uh, as growth and and well-being and there are times when 
maybe I shied away from growth that uh, actually would have been really helpful earlier on, uh, but it always catches up with you eventually. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if we need to grow, then you have to, like you have to tune in to that and actually run with it, even if it's scary. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, that's really cool. And yeah, I appreciate your, your authentic <laughs> answer there. Definitely. One question I have for you is like through this journey, uh, you know, what has been, something like your most valuable investment along the way like whether it's something that you did like uh, whether it's like a chance meeting with someone or um, a course you signed up for or perhaps you paid for something that is like uh, you know been a huge uh, impact on yourself I wonder if there's anything like any worthwhile investments (laughs) that come to mind yeah I love I love that question Um, and I'm awful at answering it I think uh to to follow without repeating myself too much like the, definitely that investment in myself right in just that that carving out conscious time uh invaluable you know that's priceless and yeah. and has paid off in so many ways um for my future self so doing that and and continuing with that has been incredibly important um i think any opportunity to shift your mindset is so powerful and and that comes in so many different forms one that this one kind of came during high school and my parents paid for it, but um, it was a worthwhile investment for them, I think, was I did this uh, leadership conference that was sort of like a Tony Robbins situation, but for high school students. So it was in Los Angeles and I'd never been to America at that point um, in my life. So it was a, very much a culture shock. And we got there and there were, mm. you know, there were like 500 other young people from all over the world and like they were raving and dancing and it was super yeah. hyped and excited. <laughs> and the guy that founded it, um, Dr. Bill Dorfman, he's like a celebrity dentist. He was on the doctors, mm. like on those, you know, daytime TV shows. Right. That's him, right? He's, the, he's yeah. the dentist. And so all his clients were not all necessarily celebrities, but they were the best at whatever that they did in their in their fields in the world um, most times and he would bring them in to this conference just to speak about like how they became successful and what what their journeys were and at the time you know as a 15 year old you're like yeah that's you know we've heard this before now like five people have said this already um or it was like helpful but you go yeah but you know can I really do this like how does this relate to me and by the end of the week it sort of clicked that you know, they're all saying the same things because all these incredibly successful people do the same things. <laughs> and yeah. we should absolutely listen to them because they they know how to achieve great success, whatever success looks like to them. So that that experience literally paved the way for this growth mindset that I didn't realize I got I was given at that time that I could do anything. Um that literally anything was possible that you were the creator of your own kind of path and and gave that overwhelming sense of agency that you don't get in a classroom um so i think ever since then i've craved any experience yeah. that kind of gives you that new um sense of of purpose and just uh, makes you feel small in a really really good and healthy way and and uh acknowledges that yeah, anything is possible for you. Um, yeah. We all need that in our lives <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so much more. So that would be great yeah, absolutely. Yeah, investment. Absolutely. Oh, that's cool. Sounds like a very cool, <laughs> very cool experience. I mean, what, I don't know if you can remember, but like what are some of the key things that you like remember for that day those guys were saying when it came to like achieving yeah, like, really yeah. cool stuff? The one quote that instantly sticks in my mind was by a guy whose name I don't even remember but he had this uh horrific story of um like he'd been in in a in a fire in this in this horrible accident and and lost like multiple limbs and and um had all these disabilities as a result of the the accident um and he told this story about you know how far are you willing to go alone um on anything that you want to achieve how how far are you willing to go alone and that's always stuck with me because in any like bold goal or like problem that you want to solve or anything that you want to achieve like how far are you willing to go being the only person believes believing that that can happen um and really like letting that sink in because that's huge you know we as as 
human beings, like we are trained biologically to, you know, um, have the support and love and care of people around us. And, and it's not, it doesn't make evolutionary sense to go out on your own all the time. So you have to really fight that instinct to do what other people are doing and listen to other people and get their approval first. Um, when you're founding a company, yeah, how far are you willing to go and be the only person that believes in that thing? Um, that I think has been my biggest takeaway and, and is also the source of that, that grit to, to keep going. Mm. Um, and the other thing that he said quite humbly was what more can I do? You know, we, we can live a life as small or, or as large as, as we choose in most instances and, mm. um, you know, playing it safe and playing it small, it just is never going to fulfill you and realize the potential that you could have had um, on the planet. So I really like that idea too of what more can I do? How, what more can I do to serve and, and give back um, for the opportunity we have to be alive and be here and mm. in this time um, in history as well? Yeah, that's super cool. Super cool. <laughs> no, thanks so much for sharing that. Um, I'd love to ask too, what, another thing you mentioned when you were talking about your trip to LA was like um, working towards like what success looks like for you because obviously that's different for everyone. It's important not to get sort of uh, someone else's idea of success and and kind of adopt it without thinking it yeah. through for yourself. But I'd love to know for yourself, what does success look like for you? Oh, it it's a it's an evolving answer um, at the moment and as it, as it should be right because it, um, we grow and change as people too uh, at, at its core it's always been about fulfillment for me and um, alignment with again my values but um, there's this art of when you're trying to achieve success right of balancing, where you are right now and being able to like fully accept where you are right now and appreciate yourself and appreciate, you know, what you have and be grateful for the now and balance that far off vision that you have in the future. And there's always that tension that's going to be there, right? But between balancing those two things, especially if you're founding a company because you're pitching to this vision that's super far in the future, but you also have to recognize, hey, we've done well to get where we are here today too, but we can always be better. So success is always about balancing those two ideas. I have lots of dreams and goals and ambitions for the future, but it takes a lot of a lot more work I would say actually to be able to accept what you've achieved already so that's not yeah. um, you know an explicit kind of goal or thing that I'm trying to achieve but it's this thing that I'm trying to practice all the time in my life because the reality is that we don't none of us know and this is really core to my thinking if you know me well is none of us know how much time we have on the planet like that's absolutely not guaranteed for anybody like God forbid, this could be my last day. And can you sit with yourself and the decisions you've made in this moment and accept that today if that was the case? Um, but also, you know, you might have another 10, 20, 30, 40 years, hopefully, to be able to work harder. Mm. So you have to have both of those things, I think, to be really fulfilled. Um, that's what success looks like to me is trying to, yeah, be inspired to keep creating and doing but also to be able to like look around me and go, this is awesome. Like, this is amazing. All the pain and, and the good, pos positive and negative parts of right now, I'm really grateful for. Yeah, that's success. <laughs> yeah, amazing. <laughs> that's really cool. Really cool. Yeah, I'll have to, um, I'll have to reflect on that, I think. I think, you've, yeah, you've been really, really great at sharing um, in the last hour or so. So <laughs> I really appreciate uh, yeah, being so vulnerable and, and sharing with us. Um, but to finish off the pod today, I just have one last question for you, Liz, and that is around um, advice you'd give to someone that is, let's say, they've finished high school and they're starting their journey uh, out in the in the big wide world. Uh, you know, thinking and reflecting on your own journey, kind of what advice would you give to someone that's going through that right now? The first thing that comes to mind is be emotional, <laughs> which is kind of strange, but. When I was younger, I thought it was bad to be, like, passionate in a way. I thought that, you know, uh, young people kind of get this bad rap of being, like, too angry and too fired up or, you know, or the opposite. They don't care enough. Like, 
I mm. think it's really important to not worry about perfection when you're young because it's just impossible to achieve and just feel things and act like impulsively somewhat and um, really appreciate the good and the bad that comes with being a young person uh, that you have to, you have to go through all of that. Like it's all really positive thing. So that would be my first piece of advice. And and secondly, to um, be, be bold again, that idea of how far are you willing to go alone? You know, don't, absolutely don't let anybody else define the path that's in front of you if you don't want to and you might you know have a family of or parents and who want a certain thing for you and think that's what is best for you and you might agree with some of those things that's totally fine but the key there is being able to ask yourself you know why am I doing this like what what's really driving this this goal or this step for me? Am I just going to university because I think I have to go to university or am I going because it's actually the, the most purposeful step for me? Um, so ask yourself why and really try and um, think about that when you're making choices and do your best to make those um, decisions in alignment with like who you are, not, not the rest of the world around you because honestly at the end of the day, who cares what they think? You have to live you have to live with it. They they don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be amazing. amazing. No, that's really fantastic. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, thanks so much for coming on the show. It's been really insightful to hear your experiences and, and everything to do with, you know, <laughs> I guess everything that you shared. It's super cool. And I think you're on an amazing journey. It's going to be really exciting to see kind of where you end up in the next couple of years so super keen to to stay in touch but for people who want to find out more about yourself and really connect in with with you where is the best place for them to go absolutely um i'm pretty easy to find on linkedin and and our website at purposeful so send me a message make sure you let me know you heard about me from here um which is always nice to know and yeah yeah, happy to absolutely happy to to chat to anybody so thanks so much for this it's been awesome really appreciate it Amazing. Yeah, well, we'll leave the links to, to all your social media and uh, whatever down in the show notes so people can go and find you. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for coming on the show today, Liz. It's been great having you. Thanks for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you want to get my takeaways, the things that I learned from this episode, please go to graduatetheory.com slash subscribe, where you can get my takeaways and all the information about each episode straight to your inbox. Thanks so much for listening again today, and we're looking forward to seeing you next week.